This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. To date, we've been really what I would call lazy with our variables, in that we haven't been defining them and we haven't been declaring them. Here's an example from the example variable file that's available in your working folder. It's a sub procedure called math example where we have 67 placed in a variable called x, 43 placed in a variable called y, and then your answer is ampersand x plus y placed in the result variable. A variable is simply a holding space in memory to cling on to your data. Once the memory has been used, it's then thrown away and discarded. It is good practice to declare all of your variables so that you know upfront what space is required. Well, not so that you know, so that the system knows. Now at the moment, we are not doing what's referred to as strictly typing. We are being very loose with our programming. Now we can tell the VBA to control us a little effectively. If you place option explicit at the top of your module, you'll see that it goes blue, so it's an accepted command. And now all of your variables must be declared. So although previously I could have run this, so if I go down to the immediate window and paste that in, let's just take that line out for a second. If I run that as it is now, nothing goes wrong. The answer is 110, which is 67 plus 43 placed with your answer is. Let's put the option explicit in there and then try to rerun this. And you'll find that it falls over because the variable has not been defined. So I haven't told it that X exists because I haven't told it that X exists but I've effectively told it that it has to declare all variables, then the command fails. So what I then need to do inside this procedure is actually declare by using dim, which is short for dimension, each of my variables, dim x, dim y, dim result, and then I can rerun the math example, which is now 110. So option explicit forces me to declare all of my variables, I declare them by using the dim keyword followed by the variable name. However, that's still only half a job. We haven't told the VBA what kind of data can be held in each of these variables. So by not defining a data type, I'm effectively allowing the editor to use what it likes. And it uses a data type called variant, in fact, which allows it to swap between text and numbers and dates, which is not very controlling. I really ought to be declaring the data type as well which we do by saying dim x, I'm declaring the variable x, that's great, as, and then a data type, in this case, I'm going to use double, which is a largest number. I'm now being asked to reset the project, that's great, that yellow highlight will disappear, dim y as double. So by defining the data type, I'm controlling what can be stored in a variable, so only numbers can be stored in x and y, whereas the result can actually hold text as well, so I'm going to declare that as a string. Come down here, and my little procedure still works fine. But I'm now controlling the data a lot more closely. I'm saying, let's set a little memory area up. Let's give it this name. And when it comes to variable names, they can use letters and numbers, but the first one must be a letter. You can't have spaces in variable names. And some punctuation is allowed and some not, so it's safe not to use any punctuation, with a maximum variable length name of 255 characters, which should be enough for most situations. So we're now declaring our variables by forcing ourselves to do it with option explicit. Now you'll find that when you insert a module, you already get option explicit on the top. If you want to turn it off, it's tools, options, and here. Require variable declaration. It has a tick in. Take that tick out and you won't get the line option explicit. I'm going to leave it in so that every new module already inserts this line, which forces me to declare all my variables before I can use them. What it doesn't force me to do is give them a data type. That's going to be a habit that you need to get into. However, how do you know what the data type options are? Luckily for you, I've supplied you a PDF in your working folder. That PDF has the main data types, how much storage space that data type needs, because that's the important part of a variable, how much space is it using on the system, and what that data type can store. So you can see that a byte, which only uses one byte of information, but it can only store numbers between 0 and 255. In fact, only whole numbers between 0 and 255. An integer, only whole numbers between minus 32,000 and plus 32,000, 
which isn't really that big. So you're then starting to look at long, which is effectively long integers, much bigger numeric range. And we have single and double that allow you to have decimal places. Then there's a date field, an object field, a string field for effectively text and numbers and characters, and then a variant for being able to swap effectively between data types. So these are the main data types. These are the ones that you will be defining when you create your variables to use in your code. So back in the VBA editor, you force yourself to define your variables by adding this line. You then define your variables using dim name of the variable as data type. And then in your code, as long as you're putting the right data type into the variable, then you won't then encounter any errors.